What's going on YouTube? So I wanted to make kind of a different style of video today to help out anyone who is looking for some advice on how to play the tank. Gonna be honest, I'm really not a fan of long-winded intros, so let's just jump right into this. So right off the bat, for anyone who doesn't know, whoever has the most damage on the infected team has the greatest chance of getting the tank. So as most of us already know, there's going to be two tanks before the end of the finale. So keeping that in mind, you can set yourself up for success by ensuring that you at least have a boomer and ideally a hunter and a smoker as well. Some people also make the mistake of holding onto a spitter. I think holding onto a spitter is a very bad idea when there's a tank. So in the beginning, when I first get the tank, I know that they don't know exactly where I'm at, so I like to start off by chucking a few rocks. So for anyone who's really not good at throwing rocks as a tank, a lot of it's just practice, obviously. Practice makes perfect. But another tip I can give you all is ask your teammates if you're aiming too high or too low, and if they're good teammates, they'll actually tell you whether or not you're overshooting or undershooting your rocks. So it looks like Lewis has had enough. Let's see how this plays out. So in hindsight here, I should have coordinated with my hunter and had him directly attack Lewis right here because he's getting super aggressive with that Molotov and making a big overextension. But I decided to take matters into my own hands and try and juke the Molotov and not get lit. Unfortunately, Lewis was pretty smart here. He saw that I was not fully committing to climbing up the ladder, so he anticipated that I was gonna drop back down and it ended up paying off. So I can tell a lot of people tend to panic when they get lit on fire and that's really the last thing you want to do because yes, while your time is running out, it's of the utmost importance to just wait for your team and just try to get any damage in that you can while you still have time. So right here I'm just doing a little rock curving to try and get some damage in while taking a little damage myself. If anyone wants to know how to do it, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube but I'm not gonna be covering it in this video. So right here, I can see my teammates grab someone with a smoker. Right now, I'm just thinking, okay, I need to try and smack someone off before I die here. So right there, Zoe has a super close call and almost gets smacked off the building, which I definitely would have if I hit her. So this is just some footage of the same game. In between the first and the second tank, we managed to get a death charge. So now the survivors are only down to three. And I've already determined that they don't have any Molotovs. So we already are coming into the second tank with two big advantages. Right here, I try and smack this guy off. Unfortunately, he kind of skips across onto the helipad there. So as you can see here, after I throw a rock, I always move to another location. This just keeps the survivors on their toes, keeps them guessing as to where you are, and it also enables you to get some rocks in where you normally couldn't from a stationary position. So right here, I try and chuck a rock at Bill and anticipate where he's going to be. Turns out I was right, but I didn't compensate enough based on his speed. So right here, my teammate vomits on Bill but the fact that my other teammates are both down doesn't really give me license enough to go in and start punching because two of the survivors are still green. So some of you may be thinking like, wow, you're still at two thirds health and there's only three of them and one of them is boom. You should definitely go in and just commit. And that's definitely the wrong answer because right now I can just whittle them down slowly but surely until they're way too weak to ever defend themselves. Right now they could still kite me because two of them are green and they're faster than I am and you have to respect that. So with a little help from my teammates, we managed to get Lewis down. Right away, the first question I asked myself is like, all right, how do we keep him down? How do we prevent the survivors from getting him up by any means necessary? So I go in here and I have the intention to never let him up. I see my teammate has grabbed Zoe and I notice Bill is going after him. So I know exactly where he's going to go. And as you can see here, patience really does pay off. We were able to wipe all of the survivors with 4,000 health to spare. So this is just another clip I'm including from a different game that really is just to illustrate how many Molotovs you can make the survivors waste just by dodging and faking them out.
So as you can see, I'm checking the game status bar to see who's the weakest, who has Molotovs, who doesn't, any sort of little weakness that I could exploit. The game gives you that information, so take advantage of it. Right here, I'm trying to pretend that I'm going to commit, and I fake out Zoe into throwing a Molotov. I promise you all, if you just keep pretending like you're going to commit, you will waste all of their Molotovs. This guy playing Zoe is only proving my point. So this is what I like to call free vision, where you maintain visual contact with the survivors, but you're staying relatively hidden at the same time. And when you're playing passively like this, in a way you're still doing damage by doing this. So don't feel like you're not doing anything because you're not punching them. They want to be able to kill you as fast as possible, but you're making it really, really difficult for them and that can lead to them doing stupid things out of impatience. One last thing on free vision, if you're trying to maintain it, do not throw rocks. If they have a Molotov, you will get lit. Oh yeah, one last thing. The reason why free vision is important is because it makes it so your rage doesn't go down. So, if there's five key takeaways I want you all to have from this video, it is one, stay raw. If you're gonna take away anything from this video, let it be this. Never, ever, ever just run in and get lit on fire. Ever. Two, respect the enemy team. If they are green, in other words, above 40 health, they will be faster than you. You can press your advantage though by focusing on the survivors that are moving slower or the survivors that are slowed down by the commons. Three, don't be a loner. Wait for your team to go in with you and cause chaos. A tank that goes in alone will almost always be doomed to fail, and then all your teammates are probably going to make fun of you for being bad at the game. Nice. 4. Be a team player. Cut your losses and accept it when you have to pass the tank to a teammate. It's objectively better to be patient and go in with a full team when you're playing as the tank. And the fifth and final piece of advice that I have for you all today is be patient. Sometimes hanging back and not doing anything as the tank is the absolute best thing that you can do. When you are being patient, try to maintain free vision as much as you can with the survivors, even if it means that you have to take some chip damage.